Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Dawn Campbell. I'm your IAPCNM host. And today I'm with the lovely uh, Wendy Furman Price. I was hesitating there because I was thinking, do I put author in front? Do I put it in afterwards? Hello, Wendy. Hi, Dawn. Thanks for the invite. Uh, you're very welcome. So this year, uh, we're having a series of interviews with successful coaches who've made the transition to also become authors. Uh, or as I like to say, join the 3% club. As I don't know if you know this, Wendy, but about 97% of people start writing a book but never finish the, the, the process. So let me just introduce you properly. Wendy Furman Price, you've had an exciting 12 months, I think. You've become an accredited fellow coach at the IAPCM. You've got an accredited course and you're holding your newly published second, no, third book, aren't you? What a yeah. beautiful cover. And that's that's taking uh, uh, the left side of the screen. So um, I think we've just got to dive straight in, Wendy, and find out how does it feel to be holding your book? Oh, now I'm holding it. It feels real. Uh, we've just recently done something called a soft launch where it was launched on digital first to enable it to sort of get out there and become uh, a bestseller. Uh, in digital form first and then now it's in physical form now it feels real now it feels like it's been born <laughs> yeah yeah very good and it looks beautiful I mean we can see that the, and I'll take this slide down in a moment uh, so we can see you and, and your books better once we've had a chance to have a look at all this information but we can see the heart as your background we can see the heart in the book and uh, on the cover and the heart is basically the everything you do isn't it yeah, heart, the heart is at the core of my business in everything that we do with the horses, with the coaching and with my writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. So, um, as I said, Wendy is uh, an accredited fellow coach, the, the highest uh, accolade you can have in terms of your capability to deliver world class coaching. Uh, you're a speaker, a trainer and an author of three books, which we'll, we'll uh, talk about. Um, and um, you've got the Equestrian Centre. Mm -hmm. So I've got the wonderful job you've got. Yes, I have the Holistic Horse and Pony Centre, which is a specialised riding centre for new nervous and novice people. And then we have the Heart Centre, where we do equine assisted coaching for entrepreneurs. And then we have our Healing Hearts and Minds with Horses CIC company that focuses on um, helping stressed teenagers, troubled teenagers or teenagers in trouble. <laughs> or the Healing Power of Horses. Yeah, wonderful. So you really are a force for good. Well, I'm going to stop sharing our screen now so that we can see you uh, properly and your books. Because uh, that's a beautiful background you've got there um, on Zoom and it reflects your books. So perhaps you take us back Wendy, if you would, to the very first book that you wrote. And what even prompted you? Now, you're a busy woman. You've got a lot going on. What prompted you to write that first book, uh, 40 Days and 40 Ways to Transform Any Problem? I was in the middle of depression. Okay. I, far from being busy, I had moved to Leicestershire and my business had completely collapsed. I had 11 horses to feed. Nobody wanted my courses. Nobody wanted me. I couldn't even give myself away for free because at the time the, um, there was foot and mouth going on. So the RSPCA didn't want me. I tried pet bereavement. They didn't want anybody in the area. And I even tried <laughs> signing up to be a Samaritan. <laughs> I thought, no, they haven't got any um, courses going on at the moment. And I, after I got over the initial rejection of like, I can't even give myself away for free. I thought, well, I know the way the universe works. It's when every door is closed, it means it's trying to funnel you down a certain route. And I thought, well, what do I really, really want to do? And I've had always loved the idea of writing, but because I failed all my English exams and useless at grammar and knowing what's correct, I had that usual voice we have in our heads going, oh, well, I don't know how to write, I don't know. But 
I thought, well, I'm being pushed into a corner here, so I'm going to do it. And I didn't even know what the book was going to be called. And I thought, well, what life experiences have I been through? And one of them was overcoming adversity in, um, in a relationship. Um, one was overcoming ME and curing myself from that. And I thought, oh, I know I could, um, how to overcome a adversity. But so I, I just sort of sat down at the computer and thought, well, what shall I write? And I didn't know what to write. I thought, okay, well, I'll think about how I did that. Um, and it then sort of evolved. It takes on a life force. So the, the, the key thing was I just started. I didn't know what to write. I just sat at the computer and just wrote something. Mm -hmm. And of course, then when you aren't writing what your soul wants you to write, it, it starts reguiding you back to wherever. And I thought, well, maybe I could use what I learned back then to help me because I was very depressed. I mean, obviously, nobody wants you even for free. It's quite a depressing feeling. You know? mm. um, and I was very, very, uh, very low. And I thought, well, okay, well, how can I get myself out of this? And I love using a holistic approach to overcoming problems so physically spiritually emotionally and practically and I thought okay well let me see what what each day brings that I can use as a principle and whilst it wasn't a direct 40 days it was very similar um, and 40 days is quite a, a spiritual meaning of a, a, a time of transformation and I just wrote down and thought well what do I feel guided to do today um, it might have been calling on, you know, getting connected to source. Maybe I had to do something practical. Um, maybe a feeling was coming up. And I just wrote these things down each day and it just evolved. And I had 10 spiritual processes, 10 mental realm processes, 10 emotional ones and 10 practical ones. And and suddenly the 40 days and 40 ways became a book. Uh, and in its truest form self-published now I wouldn't recommend it um, to because it's quite an expensive way to uh, print a book <laughs> off the photocopier however it, again the key thing I want to stress to anybody really wanting to write is start where you are and I printed them off and I had uh, one of those little binders and and I sold it for 14 no, twelve ninety nine. That's it, twelve ninety nine, which back then, thirty years ago, was quite expensive for a book. But um, <laughs> most of that was taken up. I think it cost me about ten pound a book to uh, to write, and it was also a practical workbook. So you had to you had things to read and uh, four levels, and then you had to uh, do each of those things each day. So it was a, a workbook. And fast forward. 30 years and we now have that as an online course it's quite a robust so if you really want to do some self transformation that uh, is absolutely brilliant and so I and I sold about 50 copies which um for mm -hmm. a for an, a non-ISBN and an Amazon wasn't even you know it wasn't even a name back then it was that was the, yeah. the name of the forest yeah well, thank you for your honesty in sharing that vulnerability, because I mean, that's that's one of the reasons people are, like you are successful, because you show your vulnerability, you're honest and you've done your inner work. Um, but from an author's perspective, you know, people are going to listen to this author series and think everybody's an overnight success uh, and sensation. But it's not true, as you know, we keep reiterating. It just doesn't work like that. So for you just to sit there. I'm sort of imagining back then with a typewriter um, thinking, I don't know what to write. And it reminds me of Natalie Goldberg, who, who wrote the classic Writing Down the Bones, that a lot of people don't know what to write. They don't know where to start. And she just says, sit there and type, I don't know what to write. I don't know what to write. I don't know what to write. Until a few more words come into your mind, like I fancy a cup of coffee and, oh, the milkman's just gone by and you've got a page. And so it's a muscle like any other that you need to exercise and eventually your imagination starts to free up and, and you've 
uh, really eloquently shared how that was for you. And it's quite a painful process as well, isn't it? it can be, yes. And uh, quite a, a question I'm often asked is, oh, how long did it write you, take you to write a book? And I say, well, the actual writing probably only took about 20 hours. Uh, however, if you add in the weeks, months and years of procrastination, fear and all the uh, self-doubt, uh, most well, this the half stable relationships took four years to write and uh, imperfect as I am, two years. Yes. Yeah. It, because as no, you said earlier, perfect. as you said earlier, the 97 percent of people don't finish a book. And I was nearly one of those. I was nearly one of those. Yeah, yeah. And that's and exactly says, why. Oh, I want to yeah. write a book. I want, oh, I've got a book in me. And yeah, it's the discipline of sitting down. And the reason I'm so proud that even I've got two books out, you know, let alone uh, one, is that because of some old patterns, I have always had a problem of completing something. I'm one of those people with masses of ideas. You know, I'm sort of like, you know, Loads You're of a fire starter ideas. yeah a pioneer get them out and then having to take them through to cross the t's and dotted the i's it's like oh my energy's gone and and yeah, and so yeah. for me to complete things it's been one of my hardest challenges in life so mm. for me that's where the real being proud is a uh, uh, comes from is actually finally letting go of that fear because i think with a probably again a lot of authors they're frightened of completing because what if it gets out there? What if people read it? You know, and again, we are all very vulnerable because, you know, we put our heart and soul on the pages and it is open to judgment. It's open to scrutiny. And if we haven't done a lot of inner work on that, then this is what taps into the procrastination. And as I pulled up in my new book, um, you know, that fear it's got to be perfect stops people from really just plowing on and just getting on with it and doesn't matter if it's not perfect. You know, done trumps perfection any day. Mm. You've put that so eloquently, Wendy, because it, it's also, uh, is it an oxymoron? Is that the right word? You know, you, you're writing a book, you want to put it out there. And yet you sabotage yourself from finishing because you're worried about what happens when it's out there. So mm -hmm. you, you know, you procrastinate and you go on. And I, I totally understand what you mean about the energy side, because writing, I've always said the writing the book is the easy part. As you say, you, you, you knocked it out in 20 hours, job done. But it could take you another 18 months of editing and rewrites and dealing with feedback and making sure it's concise and readable and chronological audio and all of that. And your energy does go, doesn't it, when you've read it for the seventh time. Um, but it's going to have your name on it. You want to be proud of it. And even at that stage, people lose interest and give up. But at what point do you think, Wendy, your... Um, the work that you've done on your self-esteem stepped in and said, this is good enough. Stop procrastinating. Get it out there. It's an important message. Hmm. So time to be really vulnerable. So with my first book, because um, what often happens, it's very similar to starting a relationship. So that heady time when you're all ideas you know you so in a new relationship it's all um, exciting and so you get writing and started and then the doubt kicks in you know you're in a, you're a, if you're in a relationship with someone thinking, oh are they really the right person or oh, I don't know and then we start finding fault with them don't we and then we start mm -hmm. finding fault with maybe our title or the content mm -hmm. And then we think, oh, no, maybe I, I want to show someone else. So the, we talk ourselves out of writing. So often I say those first few chapters can be very quickly written. But as you go into it, then you will find that that's when some of the can, um, procrastination can kick in. And you just don't, it's like you, the relationship reaches an um, um, impasse. And there's no way out and then you're dealing with all these doubts all these fears and then you just think oh I can't be asked and then you allow life to get in the way 
is so easy as an author if you haven't got discipline time to just let life get in the way and you know I've I have got an extraordinary busy life and I, I recognize that you know there's been a pattern from since 14 and I love my life I love you know love it but I also do recognize that I use a lot of that busyness to avoid things and then what you need to do so when I I'd got to about I think I'd go about nine chapters and sometimes the chapters you write aren't always in chronological order um, and again, that's I'd like to help alleviate any worry that it has to be or I need to you know, have it all mapped out. Have an idea, um, but you may find as you write where well, actually that chapter um, or those words fit better in chapter four. And that one would be better if I left it at the end. So you just the key thing is just get it out. But you're getting near the end. <laughs> You've only got like two or three chapters left to do. And that's it you go, I went into paralysis. It's like, I can't do this. I can't do this. You know, that mind is like um, all the fears and everything kick in. And when we're afraid of our purpose or getting our soul stuff out, we it's like your life starts to stop. <laughs> And that's a bit of an oxymoron, doesn't it? But it's like things close down. It Life gets uncomfortable. A bit like the, I think it's the cuckoo, um, whose mum takes away all the nice comfortable bits of the nest when the cuckoo is ready to fly. And it's almost you get pushed into a bit of slam, sledgehammer guidance. And I was so low. Um, I was working with a business coach at the time and she happened to just have a, a seminar going on at a retreat place. And I thought, I have to go to this place and I'm not coming home until I finish that book. And so I went there to get some, um, you know, some help with the um, businessy stuff. But then I stayed on at that retreat place until I finished the book. I just went, I have got to do this because I knew I could tell from things that were happening or rather not happening in my life. It was like, no, nope, we're not there. We're not letting you have anything more until you get that book finished, Wendy. <laughs> and so I got, you know, I finally got it finished. You really called on a what sounds like a very deep reservoir of determination and discipline to push yeah. through. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And that's unfortunately not a very full well at times. <laughs> 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 I'm not the most, uh, I'm not known for my best uh, self-discipline <laughs> and uh, being yeah. uh, So, so yes, you're right. I had to find that part of me. It's like, you know, being that firm parent, get your mm. homework done. Yeah. It sounds very romantic, though, going off to a writing retreat and locking yourself away. And 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 uh, I heard somebody say recently, vomit out your book. You know, just get it out there. You can sort it out later, but you've just got to get it out on paper. Um, and it sounds very idealized, say, you know, oh, you allowed yourself the time to go to a retreat and write a book. But it, from what you've said, it's so much more than that. It really is grit and determination. Mm, yeah if you can't again you look at your life if you if some you have to first of all find when is your best writing time mm -hmm. uh, for me my best writing times are either really early in the morning like four or five o'clock sometimes if I'm being an owl and I can't sleep because I've got an idea going on that will go or for me the best times are when I can get away and just be in a room hotel room that's got no distractions or thing oh I can see the cleaning he's doing oh I better um, sort the wardrobe out and 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 you know all your home stuff which when this fear mm. is kicking in we for me to even think about housework that's just shows so much you know I'm allowing the fear to take <laughs> over <laughs> you know I wasn't yes. for this work. but I'm one of those people that like to just get in there and just let the flow 
I, I'm mm-hmm. not sure I'll vomit, but um, I just let, like the fountain to flow and feel connected mm-hmm. and just let the hands do the work. Yeah, I mean, I can I can really resonate with that. And I'm, I'm definitely somebody who if I had three months to write a book, I would write it all in the last three weeks. I'd <laughs> eat, sleep and breathe it because I'd be procrastinating for the other two and a bit months. Um, put you know every obstacle in my way and I'd be calling it research and all the other stuff. But when it came to it, I, I, I would be a crammer and, and put myself under a huge amount of stress to do it at the end. So what did you learn from your first book that helped you write your second book in terms of the structure, the format, the writing process, Wendy? So I was really um, lucky that um, I was with a company um, that uh, a publishing company back then that had a very, very structured way of writing um, and took you through step by step. And I... I feel this day and age, you know, book writing has become very different. We're no longer waiting to, you know, hopefully a a publisher might think of us and um, and we'll be good enough for a publisher. You just got to get on and do it and do what's called a hybrid publishing where you get, you pay for uh, help and they help you with the, you know, getting the book out in different ways. And my first book was very much the structure. And I think your first book is your your ego book. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. This is like, oh, I've written a book. Um, and then your next one is your marketing tool. So mm. for me, it's my this um, helps me want to sort of attract a lot of people that are working on self-love. And now I've got a, a better marketing tool marketing tool to be able to, to work with. Mm. So let's have a look at the cover of your second book and um, talk about it. That's that's the 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 um, uh, the heart of stable relationships. Oh, that one. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Okay. Uh, just bring it over. Oh, yeah, that's it. So when we've got these Zoom backgrounds, okay. So yeah. the twelve <laughs> ways of healing power of horse how horses transform your life. Stable relationships. Yeah, you you do like a a, a play on words, don't you? Yes. Oh, I love I love my words. <laughs> I love playing with words. And as I say, considering I hated English, hated the English teacher, never read a book. I never read a book, believe it or not, willingly until I got Emmy. Um, and what's one of the biggest gifts Emmy gave me is when I was struck down to pin get pinned down by my body and soul. Right. And then I just learnt. I learned the joy of reading, but I read books I wanted to read, and then that made all the difference. Mm, yeah. And what sort of books did you like reading that got you through that that dark and painful time of ME, Wendy? I started with Course in Miracles, uh, Louise Hay, um, Love is Letting Go of Fear. So I was dealing with a lot of you know, tur- you know turbulent times a lot of the a lot of self-help uh I really got into the personal development loved all the Wayne Dyers and Stuart Wilde and then that sort of mm. kicked me into becoming a metaphysical practitioner and teacher and supervisor um, because I loved the spiritual aspect that gives us the understanding of life <laughs> wow so you really used your period of illness to go to a whole different university and learn and and open up a whole new career to you yeah and I believe when we when we work with adversity whether it's illness debt relationship issues everything I believe that's happening to us is actually happening for us and the the trick is to find the gift in oh I think that's what was called finding the gift in adversity that was the name of the uh before the 40 days and I remember halfway through my ME I was about six months in and I was very because I'm like I was pinned down and being a very energetic and you know hyper hyperactive person yeah that's like (laughs) like the worst thing that I could be given 
And my, I remember my doctor saying, oh, stop fighting it and make it your friend. Well, I, I came out of that surgery spitting blood because I'm like, how can I make it my friend? I can't do what I want to do. You know. However, it played on my mind. I thought, well, OK, well, if Emmy is here for me, you know, with me for life, because back then, 30 odd years ago, it was considered incurable. Mm. Um, I better get to know it. But then that's when I started focusing on, well, I can't do that, but what can I do? And that's when, you know, I could, well, I could read. Okay, well, maybe I could start reading. And then it just changed my thoughts, my process. And, and you yeah, know, bless Louise Hay, you know, and her thinking, because that really did change my life. And, you know, wow, what if we could change our reality? I didn't believe it at first. I thought it was a load of bunkum, you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah. who would create a reality like I had, <laughs> <laughs> like, like yeah, who, would, who would choose it yeah. but then well what if I could change it what if it, um yeah fabulous yeah I'm a Louise Hay Heal Your Life trainer uh teacher uh so it that's what I see when I see your heart I, it just reminds me of Louise Hay's work um amazing stuff so yeah. the first I did, book have, I did, have, did her training right in the very very beginning 30 40 years ago so. Wow, way, way ahead of me. Uh, so you wrote the book, the first one was for yourself. The second book, who did you write it for? Who was in mind? Well, I had um, been doing a lot of work with the horses that had been really developing, that had sort of come out of, you know, the ME stuff and uh, relationship stuff. And that was getting more and more un people curious so I thought I wanted to write a book to explain how the horses could help us and document a lot of the miraculous and magical things that the horses had helped brought to the surface by the way they acted um, but also sort of following my I do have a bit of a theme around my books a, a little bit of a self formula how I, I like to write and it was just yeah just to have a book in the realm of my peers that followed what was going you know the, the launch of equine assisted coaching and therapy even though I'd been doing it several years I uh, wanted to just show you know people well if they could read their read the book first they could get an idea of just sort of the way that horses can help but even if they're not into horses there's a lot they can get from the stories just by sort of opening the book and becoming um study one one of the pages and what's in it there how did the horse help that person and nine times out of ten it'll be exactly what you're working on at the moment so it's, a, it's a, one of those special books you can hold and just go right what do i need to know and um, yeah okay and you said you followed a process. How did the process from your first book mature when you started writing your second book? You said it took you two years, um, but what was the process? No, four years, I think you said. Yeah, the first one, about four years. Um, it's followed along a little bit along the lines of the course that, that I was teaching people with the horses. Um, so I sort of... You know, sort of very similar to the sort of modules that I was presenting, and just okay. took the ess essence of each of those. Mm, okay. And can you remember any authors that you knew in your your circle of influence? And if there were any, what was the best advice that they gave you that you know has made a real impact on you producing a third book, Wendy? Mm. I think I think what has was becoming very apparent through the marketing was the importance of having a book to support you to help and because the heart of stable relationships hasn't got what we call curb appeal it's not it's not a book that's going to sort of attract a lot of people unless you know the feeling of 
you know, I want to get into horses, whatever. So I had to write something that is going to try and, you know, pull in a few other people. And just, yeah, I suppose just being amongst uh, a lot of business coaches and personal development, you know, just, you know, just being mm, inspired yeah. by the, you know, people and their writing. Mm. And then I was on the way to America at the time and the inspiration came in, um, I mean, it couldn't got much higher <laughs> in the plane across the Atlantic and uh, playing, playing with words like I do. And again, it seems like I write when I'm depressed. <laughs> And I have a sort of depression. And I, again, this is where using adversity to help you is like when things aren't going in flow, it means a, a direction needs to be changed, something a belief might need to be updated, emotion might need to be healed, or it's pushing you to do what the very thing you're afraid of doing. And mm. depression does that for me. I get really frustrated with myself. But I'm not brilliant at um, emotions. That might be my next book. And so I'm a bit of a push them down, push them down. But then, of course, with depression, depression is the suppression of your expression. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not getting out. Obviously, I'm not getting out my feelings, not getting out anything. And so I was again in a sort of lower place, but going on a, a business workshop um, and money mindset and things. And then I just got the inspiration and realized that I was so, the procrastination was just coming about um, in my life just because I was just trying to be perfect all the time, trying to get it right. Um, and it's so exhausting so exhausting trying to always feel you're good enough trying to prove you're good enough to your clients trying to prove you're good enough to your partner trying to prove you're good enough to your parents and and anything that we're trying to prove we obviously don't believe um, yeah and when I was able to just let go of that and just go you know what? And I don't know, I don't, I'm not exactly sure where imperfect as I am came, but I must have, there must have been something around perfection or procrastination. And, and then I'm perfect, you know, as I am, you know, to stop trying to be perfect. Um, and when we can celebrate our imperfections, we will actually feel good enough, we will feel perfect. Is it, it but not in a way that we don't want to keep improving, but not from a broken sense, not because we're not good enough or we're broken and we've got, we've got to be fixed because none of us are broken. We've just got beliefs that are hindering us and emotions that are blocking us and strategies that are not helping. Nobody is broken not even the most traumatized person because it, again it's just uh, in my belief is that we've just taken that event and we've we've just over replayed it and how my clients get through trauma is that once we acknowledge what's happened and the emotions behind it and the strategies they've uh, because perfection often comes from trauma. I help them see it in a very, very different light. It's like literally, you know, 180 degree turn. And when they see how that trauma was there to serve a higher purpose in their life, then it, it's all, no, I wouldn't say it's instant, but it is very transformational because the pain is now turned into um, a force for good rather than just draining it from them. Wow. Well, they say the best songs are written uh, when people are at the height of emotional romantic pain. Yeah. So why wouldn't the best books be written in the 
the height of depression or coming through a depression. Um, so that, that's really inspirational. Thank you for that. And, and you've led us on beautifully to your, your third and latest book, which I know you've just taken delivery of. So you're still, yeah. stro you're still at the stage where you're stroking it. <laughs> it feels real now. Yes. yes. Yeah. So it's interesting uh, that you mentioned when I asked you about, uh, you know, was there a particular author or some inspiration? It was actually your fellow uh, marketeers and coaches who helped you, you know, in that sense, bring your book to market. Because as I'm always telling our new members at the IAP CNM, you know, get a short book out there as soon as you possibly can. It's going to help um the, the the clients identify you as an expert in your field it's a great sales tool it's a thank you giveaway it's a competition it's part of your legacy so many it opens doors to you know being interviewed and to speaking um what is what is uh, one of the best things that your book has done for you wendy I got to speak for women in business um, just before Christmas and um, that was very helpful and helped um, entrepreneurs again because I, I believe as entrepreneurs we're always putting things off because it's not perfect enough or we're not as good as that a competitor or, or whatever and the uh, as it had only just come out in digital form and the Kindle form and a fellow podcaster was doing a self-love series and it was just a perfect timing for going on the podcast with this. You yourself have invited me on as an interview and mm. um, I've got a, a few things in the pipeline which uh, we're just waiting to hear, you know, some... Um, other interviews and hopefully radio stations that are going to be in, mm. in um, ready to go to the interview stage now. Right. So it's it's definitely open doors that you wouldn't have had without your book. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And one of the questions we get, you know, people um, or one of the doubts and fears that we get in as well there's already been a book written on perfectionism there's already been a book written on this and all but when you are willing to add you into that your perspective your take your story you connect and resonate with the you know law of attraction the people that would most identify and get so much from that and mm. Yes, there's people, you know, some real professional speakers around who can probably write tons better than me and whatever. But sometimes we can't resonate with them. They're almost like too wafty, you know, or they're too perfect or they're too this, that and the other. And so sometimes when we are, you know, perhaps just a couple of feeling like a couple of steps ahead of our, our the people that we serve and the community or our tribe, people can actually identify better with us. Um, mm -hmm. and then they resonate because you're more real you're not just somebody you know sitting up there on a pedestal because you've written a book it, it's your take your idea around the subject or the um, journey that you've been on whether that's fiction you know if you want to write a fiction which is usually based with something that's going on for you um, or non-fiction you know I think you've just um, articulated the antidote to that gremlin that uh, says you know why me who's going to read my book why another book uh, mm. but also to think about those people that we aspire to uh, you know, who are way up there, they probably didn't really write their books. They probably had ghost writers, professional writers, because they're so busy leading their professional celebrity type life. Um, mm. But you, you, you're you right um, that if you can put the human element in it, show some vulnerability, then your reader can connect with you. Uh, yeah. When you're writing, Wendy, are you writing for yourself, for one person, for an audience? What's going through your mind? Hmm. Let me think. I, 
I suppose a bit of a uh, mixture. I'm sort of writing what I'm feeling mm -hmm. as if I'm having a conversation with my best friend. So I like to think my readers are my best friend that I can share what I'm feeling or maybe that they're going through something and I'm someone who could just be someone to support them with some ideas to think about. So it, my style of writing is very conversational. It, I really do write as I speak and uh, I'm always told off and a number of uh, mannerisms I have in there. And the, but I have to put me in there. I want yeah. to feel you're, we're having a conversation. I want to speak to you and uh, feel that it's just a two way conversation. Yeah. Which means that you're less hung up then on things, the technical stuff, which as I've edited people's books, I'm very hung up on keeping paragraphs to five sentences, sentences to 22 to 25 words, uh, X number of words per sentence. You know, I'm I'm doing that all the time. And I think I perhaps lose some of the conversational element that you benefit from. I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> 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 yeah to read oh, okay. every paragraph and count all the words and you know just oh, to right, okay. check that sort of short punchiness um because some people I've read some paragraphs and the whole paragraph is one sentence you know but that's sometimes the way that we talk isn't it yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I mean Ooh, okay. <laughs> Uh, how many pages are in uh, in your latest book? Uh, I think it's 130, 137. Good. I'm so glad you said a low number because there's research out there that says 96 pages is optimal. And mm. once you get into the sort of the 190 pages, which a lot of books are, um, your readership you know, like a relationship, you start a new book or a new course or a new project, really excited, and then you don't finish the book or the course or whatever. Um, the number of uh, books that are read, it goes down dramatically the longer the book is. So yeah. American research said that 96 pages was optimal. So I'm on a mission to help people write 90 pages in 90 days, because I think if you can write one page a day, 90 okay. days, you've got a book. And I don't know if you know this, but it takes 12 and a half minutes to type a page or 25 minutes to write a page, handwrite a page. So I'm thinking, well, you know, as busy coaches, mums, householders, whatever, we can all find 12 and a half minutes a day, uh, you know, to type a page. In 90 days, we've got the makings of a book. Uh, so that's kind of my mission. Um, Brilliant. So, yeah, I'm glad yours is a, a shorter book uh, because I think it's much more um appealing and also it's easier to carry around nobody wants to carry around tombs do they they want something they can put in their pocket read on a train etc yeah and I, I remember uh, one of my coaches uh saying the content needs to be inhalable you know if and again this is where reassuring people that they don't have to be a necessarily a wordsmith um, and quite honestly if you're if you're too uh, technical with your words you lose a lot of people because they oh, I don't know what that means and then then they start feeling stupid because they don't know what you mean and then they give up reading your book yeah definitely it's not it's not an opportunity to show off no no back to that human element isn't it um Mm, okay so before we wrap up just a little bit more about uh you Wendy now that you're uh, an established author of not one, not two, but three books, and you've got courses and horses and <laughs> programs, <laughs> what do you like to read to, to chill out? Is it self, still self-development or do you go for something else now? I can't be bothered with reading fiction. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll watch telly for my fiction um, yeah, where yeah. I, I can have something that isn't, you know, doesn't need me to use a brain to work out what's going to happen particularly that's that's my downtime but no mm -hmm. I I love my books I mean my house is just 
too many books but I love them and I'll, I'll just keep buying books and I like physical books I'm, I'm not really a lost Wendy for a moment. Just wait for her to come back. And you're back with us. Hello, Wendy. Hello, my lovely, you're back. Oh, I got chucked <laughs> out suddenly. <laughs> oh, what did we say earlier about Zoom? Playing up, <gasps> isn't it? But you're yeah. back. Okay, so you were saying you're, you're so many books, so little time, your house is crammed with physical books, you love them. So yeah. fellow bookworms, lovely. So what are the three books then that you would rescue in a house fire or take to a desert island that you couldn't bear to be without, apart from your own three, of course? Yeah, uh, Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. uh, anything by Chuck Spazzano and whichever book my uh, intuition guided me to. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about a piece of music? Oh, my decent eye disc is House of the Rising Sun by the Animals. Oh, lovely, <laughs> lovely. Okay. So, how can people find you? Buy your books, go on your courses. Apart from your IAPCM directory, what's the best way for people to find and connect with you, please, Wendy? Which I need to uh, brush up. Um, complete is my director, I just realised. Um, the heartcentreuk.com is the best website. Mm -hmm. It's not a brilliant one, but it's the best one. And mm -hmm. Wendy at the heartcentreuk.com. Okay. And my books are on Amazon, The Imperfect As I Am and The Heart of Stable Relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, but my first book is now a course. So if anyone wanted to really take time to properly develop on all four levels that we exist on, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, then if they email me, I can give details of that. I'm willing to do a half price at... Um, and it's normally 497, so I'd be happy to do 297. Oh, wow, what an offer to transform your life. Save money at the same time. Thank you for that, Wendy. And what would somebody have to do, uh, beg, steal, borrow, twist your arm to get a free signed copy of your latest book? Just say the first person that responds to you from this recording. Do they contact you? Is that the best way? Or me? Uh, no, directly. Email? Yeah. Um, email me. Yeah. Okay. Wendy at the heart center UK dot com. Lovely. And just put right. um, Dawn interview in the title. And yeah. I will be delighted to send you a copy. Lovely. All right. Well, I look forward to receiving mine once I've moved house. So thank you for yeah. that. Pleasure. And uh, I do hope uh, we'll see more of you at the IAPCM doing master classes on bringing your book to life. Um, so that more of the, uh, the community, the international community, get to hear about your good works. And one day when I go back to the UK, I am going to come and visit the Heart Centre. Yeah. It sounds yeah. an amazing place. Thank yeah. you for sharing your time and uh, your generosity of spirit. Thank you, well, Wendy. Thanks, Dawn. It's been brilliant. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. readers and listeners. <laughs> Thank you.